weekdays on CBS. And trending cooler as we close out the week, but we've declared an alert for some accumulating snow that will impact part of the upcoming weekend. Details in the early warning forecast. Also ahead right now, covering the cost of a brand new high school. One town is getting the green light to pay millions more for the plan. And some bell ringing blues for the Salvation Army as the organization deals with a big drop in donations. From WFSB, Connecticut's number one local news, this is Channel 3 Eyewitness News at 11. Buddy, and thanks for joining us right now for Eyewitness News at 11. I'm Mark Zinni. It is official tonight. The price tag for a brand new high school in Farmington is going up. Voters said yes to shelling out nearly $10 million more for this project. Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter Christian Colon has more from Farmington. Farmington High School students will soon see brand new buildings, tennis courts, classrooms, more parking, and administrators will get new offices, a price tag of $145.3 million. You know, I've been here over 25 years. My kids went to school here. They got great educations, great teachers and coaches. Um, you know, I want to keep my property value up. Um, and we're probably not going to do this again for a long time, so let's just do it. The original plan voters approved last year cost $135.6 million, but this year the town said they needed $9.7 million more because of inflation, and tonight the majority of voters were okay with the price hike. I think Farmington needs a new high school. Both my children have already graduated, but I think for a good town and a, and a good population, uh, that the high school is well overdue for major, major change. The state will reimburse the town over $40 million, and taxpayers will be footing other parts of the bill. Over five years, taxpayers will pay $491, something not everyone is thrilled about. I'll probably start looking to leave town, honestly. I mean, I've been a homeowner here for, like I said, over 20 years, but... You know, to think of what our tax, our taxes are going to look like in the future, we're, we're being squeezed out. But now the town won't have to cut back, and they will stick with the original blueprints. Now we've received all the bids, which is why we knew we had to go out when we got the actual dollars. Uh, once we've approved the bids, we can actually start infrastructure and putting up steel and concrete. Uh, so we'll see something coming in there. And this new construction will not interfere with classes. We're told this project should wrap up in two years. In Farmington tonight, Christian Colon, Channel 3, Eyewitness News. All right, we are certainly trending cooler across Connecticut. We're down 10 to 20 degrees compared to this time last night as we check out our network of neighborhood weather stations. Close to freezing already in Litchfield, 33 stores at 34, 37 East Hartford, West Haven. Still right at the 40-degree mark, but as uh, the wind continues to subside a bit and under a clear sky, temperatures drop uh, into the 20s at inland, low 30s at the shoreline. Wind right now out of the north at around 5 to 15 miles an hour. So if the wind remains up enough, temperatures won't dip as low as they possibly could go, uh, but still looking sub-freezing, mid and upper 20s inland at 7 o'clock in the morning, between 30 and 35 at the shoreline, and under abundant sunshine and with a calmer wind tomorrow, we're going to peak, say, by mid-afternoon in the mid-40s. But shifting our attention, of course, to the upcoming weekend, a big change for us after the dry and bright end to the week. We're going to see increasing cloud cover on Saturday with a developing onshore east-northeasterly flow with high pressure to our north and a storm passing by well offshore. Uh, at the same time, for Sunday, we've got a disturbance, a quick moving one, moving at us from the west, moving from the Great Lakes here across southern New England. This will bring snow to southern New England by, say, Sunday afternoon into Sunday night because of the potential impact to the Monday morning commute due to a light accumulation of snow, specifically in the higher elevations of northern and northwest Connecticut, we've declared an alert. We'll have much more on the timing and potential totals in the early warning seven day. All right, we'll see you in a few minutes, Mark. Thank you. Right now at 11, five New Haven police officers were in court earlier today for the first 
time in a case that's made national headlines. They're accused of not getting Randy Cox the medical help that he needed after he was paralyzed back in June. Cox was badly hurt in the back of a police van when the driver stopped suddenly, sending Cox flying head first. Body cam footage then shows officers dragging him into a holding cell despite his pleas that he could not move. The officers are charged with misdemeanors. Today, Cox's lawyer said his client hopes justice will be served. He was very disappointed, and uh, he would like to see them, even though they're not felonies, punished to the fullest extent of the law. The officers will be back in court next month. Cox is currently in a rehab facility, but hopes to be in court himself to watch. All new for you tonight, outcry from the community after a noose was found at Ram High School in Hebron. And this weekend, a rally is being planned in town. In fact, it's being hosted by the Coalition on Diversity and Equity. It'll be held at 10 a.m. on Saturday at the intersection of routes 66 and 85. The noose was found last month in a locker room. An unidentified teenager was arrested. All new tonight, a bill inspired by a Connecticut man who vanished is moving forward at the U.S. Capitol. Billy's Law would help streamline the reporting process in a missing persons case. It's named after Billy Simolinski, who disappeared from Waterbury back in 2004. During their search, his family faced red tape and hurdles that left them without many answers. The U.S. Senate passed the bill. It now heads to the House. New tonight, a drastic decline in donations for the Salvation Army. This holiday season, you may have already noticed fewer bells ringing outside local stores. Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter Bryant Reed is live right now in New Britain with more on what's driving this decline. Bryant. Yeah, Mark, one of those issues that you just mentioned is the lack of bell ringers. As a matter of fact, the Salvation Army here in New Britain even has a sign that says that they're accepting applications right now for bell ringers. Now, as the year has gone on, more and more people have asked the Salvation Army for help. And don't get me wrong, they're doing everything that they can. It's just that they need more assistance. If you're walking into a grocery store this holiday season, you might not hear that familiar ring of a Salvation Army bell. Some still are a little bit nervous about COVID and health concerns with being out. Major Deborah Ashcraft says the reason people aren't volunteering as much to ring the bell is anecdotal. She's not really sure why, but it's affecting the dollars they raise. People are still giving donations, but we have fewer kettles out there because we have a shortage of bell ringers. And so that clearly impacts the, the kettle campaign. The money goes towards making sure people can still stay in their homes with lights on and a meal at the table. But Quinnipiac professor Muhammad Elahi says there's a reason people are clenching to each dollar with a tight fist. Typically, our uh, style of giving money to charity follows the economic cycle. In other words, when the economy is doing well, people donate more. When it's not doing well, naturally, they donate less. Certain spending, we do not have any control. At the end of the month, I still have to pay for my electricity bill. I still have to pay for my gases. But wherever I can tighten my belt, I would. Just one reason why Salvation Army has taken a toll. But Major Ashcraft says your donations don't have to be money. It can be time, like becoming a bell ringer yourself and increasing donations by standing in front of a store petitioning for a good cause. As inflation has hit hard and many could use the help. Now, outside of your time, there are other ways that you can also donate. If you just so happen to not see a kettle sometime this holiday season, you can donate one virtually. You can start a virtual kettle, and you can also text a number that the Salvation Army has. We'll make sure to have that information online. In New Britain tonight, I'm Brian Reed, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Yeah, certainly a lot of ways to help. Brian, thank you very much. All new for you tonight at 11, state police troopers could be getting higher salaries thanks to a new tentative labor agreement. Governor Ned Lamont and the state police union announced they have reached a deal covering troopers, sergeants, and master sergeants. The plan would be retroactive from July 1st of 2022 through June of 2026. State leaders hope the plan will help retain troopers, even attract new ones as state police deal with a shortfall in staff. More money for starting salaries. I don't think I can get into much more detail than that, but um, uh, we got to do everything we can to continue to recruit the best and the brightest for our state police. Um, and uh, I think you'll see uh, an increase there that will hopefully make a real difference. 
Now, the terms of the deal will have to be reviewed and submitted to the Connecticut General Assembly for final approval. A very, very special surprise earlier today for the family of a fallen Bristol police officer. Tunnel to Towers paid off the mortgage of Lieutenant Dustin DeMonte's home. The group hand-delivered the payoff notice to his widow this week. She said this will allow her now to spend a lot more time and give her energy, all of her energy, to her children. Lieutenant DeMonte was killed in an ambush back in October. He leaves behind his pregnant wife and two children. Still ahead tonight, basketball star Brittany Griner will be home for the holidays. More on this high-stakes prisoner swap and why not everyone's real happy with the outcome here. And no more free lunch for thousands of Connecticut students. Why crucial funding is running out. I have a great team of doctors working alongside me to help me. And Celine Dion reveals a stunning diagnosis, what we're learning about the very rare syndrome she's now dealing with. They say all roads lead home. And this holiday season, home is the place we feel safest. So when you're driving, think about the people around you on their way home. And let's work together to make the roads our safe place, too. Connecticut police officers are out there to protect your family this holiday season. Please drive safely so everyone gets home. You're a champion of multiple fantasy leagues. Your dominant reign is unprecedented. To watch over this dynastic empire, you scored a TV that's unbeatable in every measurable visual category. The only thing that can hand this fancy TV a bitter defeat? Bad internet. Get good internet with Cox for faster and more reliable speeds than 5G home internet because good things deserve good internet. The Yukon Husky Super Fan Prize Pack. Women's basketball, men's basketball, and men's hockey. Eyewitness News has your tickets for all three. Enter to win on Facebook and you could be going to the games. Our next winner tomorrow morning on Eyewitness News. Sometimes a cough isn't just a cough, so it's better to be prepared. Binax now gives you reliable results in 15 minutes and detects multiple variants, including Omicron BA5. Binax now, the number one COVID-19 self-test in the U.S. Connecting you to quicker routes so you can stress less on the road. Watch Pinpoint Traffic on Eyewitness News, sponsored by your Connecticut Chevy dealers. Sometimes a cough isn't just a cough, so it's better to be prepared. Binax now gives you reliable results in 15 minutes and detects multiple variants, including Omicron BA5. Binax now, the number one COVID-19 self-test in the U.S. Tonight. Oh, Santa, you got my letter. The winner's got a new late show with Alicia Keys tonight on CBS. Eyewitness News with Aaron Connolly, Mark Zenny, early warning weather with Chief Meteorologist Mark Dixon, and sports with Joe Zone. Now, Eyewitness News at 11 continues. A big change now coming for school meals here in Connecticut. Federal aid that covered the cost of universal free meals is running out already in some districts. In Bloomfield, the district there has started notifying families that students will have to start paying for meals again on January 12th. Other districts, like Suffield have already run out of that federal funding. We still have the free and reduced lunch program, people who qualify for, but there's parents who fall outside those guidelines, and I worry that you know, they may be struggling to figure out how to get meals for their kids. Now, the State Department of Education says concerned families should apply to the SNAP program. In Washington today, the House of Representatives took the next step to protect marriage equality. The Respect for Marriage Act passed the House with 258 votes. It requires all 50 states to recognize another state's legal marriage, no matter the sex or race of those getting married. The Senate already passed the legislation. It now heads to President Biden's desk, where he will sign it into law. Well, any time right now, Brittany Griner will be back right here in the United States. She's heading home after a high-profile prisoner swap nearly 10 months after she was detained in Russia. Channel 3's Deborah Alfaron has more on the deal that set her free. 
Video from Russian state media shows Brittany Griner leaving a Russian penal colony on her way back home to America. Happy. <laughs> the WNBA star was part of a prisoner swap for international arms dealer Victor Boot, known as the Merchant of Death. The two are seen crossing paths on this tarmac in Abu Dhabi. Congratulations. Griner's wife, Sherelle, thanked President Biden at the White House. Today is just a happy day for me and my family, so um, I'm going to smile right now. <laughs> Left out of the deal was Marine veteran Paul Whelan, who has been imprisoned in Russia since 2018 on espionage charges. For totally illegitimate reasons, Russia is treating Paul's case differently than Britney's. U.S. officials say including Whelan was a non-starter for the Russians in the months of negotiations, but they vowed to keep fighting for his release. This was not a choice of which American to bring home. The choice was one or none. Boot was serving a 25-year sentence for conspiring to kill Americans. Critics of the president say the U.S. should have gotten a better deal for him. There are answers that I need to receive before uh, I can applaud the Biden administration on this. Whelan's brother says the administration made the right decision, though the family is still devastated that he remains in Russia. The map is not going to work out for Paul to come home anytime soon. This is President Biden's second prisoner exchange with Russia. In April, Marine veteran Trevor Reed was traded for a Russian drug smuggler. Deborah Alfaron, CBS News, the White House. Two music superstars now are dealing with some health issues tonight, including singer Celine Dion. She's postponing several tour dates in Europe after being diagnosed with a rare neurological disorder. In an emotional video on Instagram, the 54-year-old Grammy winner said she's suffering from stiff person syndrome. It's a very rare progressive condition that affects the nervous system. I miss you so much. I miss seeing all of you. Being on the stage, performing for you. Now, specific treatments will improve symptoms but won't cure the disorder. She hopes to be on the road again in 2024. Meanwhile, Aerosmith was forced to cancel the final two concerts of the band's residency in Las Vegas as Steven Tyler deals with health problems. It's unclear right now what may be wrong, but the band says Tyler's doctors told him he has to take a break and sit the show out. Back in May, the band was forced to stop touring after Tyler, who is 74, voluntarily changed checked into rehab after a relapse. Now, Channel 3 Early Warning Weather. All right, we are 13 days away from the winter solstice, and recently, of course, has not been feeling anything like December. Yesterday, we had highs near 60. Today, in the 50s, tomorrow, even cooler weather, and that uh, chillier air continues to arrive. We've got temperatures here in the 11 o'clock hour. Still above freezing uh, in the mid and upper 30s for many communities inland, close to 40 along the 95 corridor. This northerly wind, 5 to 15 miles an hour, sending that cooler, drier air into the state, making it feel, especially across inland areas, near if not below freezing, uh, feeling like 23 right now in Torrington, 27 Windsor Lock. So tonight the wind subsides a bit more and temperatures drop to below freezing, especially across interior portions of the state. So a colder start tomorrow morning compared to the last several for sure. Right now, 40 degrees looking live from New London. This point last night, the fog was lifting. We have absolutely great visibility right now, 35 looking live from Waterbury and the scene from Windsor Locks currently 37 with that north wind at 7. So uh, cloud cover from earlier uh, been suppressed to the southwest of Connecticut as high pressure continues to build out of Canada. So as it gets closer, it's going to send that cooler air in our direction. Again, the wind will relax and throughout the day tomorrow, looking for a dry, bright end to uh, the work week. So overnight tonight, we'll say between 25 and 30 inland for temperatures to bottom out between 30 and 35 along the shoreline. So a little bit closer to what's considered typical or average for this time of year tomorrow afternoon. Uh, near 40 in the Northwest Hills, mid 40s elsewhere inland and also along the 95 corridor. So again, a calmer wind with a bright sky. Then for the upcoming weekend, things, things change in a pretty dramatic fashion. We've been highlighting over the past several days how high pressure that's going to bring the dry, bright weather for tomorrow off to our north is going to be also, um, oh, Connecticut will be in between high pressure and this uh, storm system well offshore. Between the two, we'll be getting this northeasterly onshore 
offshore flow. So that's going to uh, allow cloud cover to build across the area throughout the day on Saturday. Looking to be a primarily dry, but maybe a little bit kind of damp feel to the day. And the breeze out of the northeast is going to make it feel even chillier. Uh, then for Sunday, we've got a disturbance, a uh, quick moving uh, clipper type system working across the Great Lakes heading in our direction. So by say Sunday afternoon, at least as we see it now, um, by say you know, sun, sunset points thereafter, uh, rain and snow chances increasing. Pretty quick hitting, some light snow associated with this, uh, tapering off, winding down as we head toward the Monday morning commute. And then that storm rapidly intensifies as it swings offshore and heads up toward the uh, Canadian Maritime. So uh, the amount of snow and the timing still a little bit subject to change given we're still a few days out. But from what we're looking at currently, and this is preliminary from later Sunday into early Monday morning, a good part of coastal southeast Connecticut picking up around a coating to an inch, if that, as we will see some rain mix in. It's in the higher elevations of northern Connecticut and throughout the Litchfield Hills uh, that we could see upwards of one to three inches of snow. So we'll, of course, fine-tune that map as we get closer. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, temps tomorrow in the mid-40s and then for Saturday, low 40s. That breeze will make it feel more like the 30s than Sunday. High temperatures only in the 30s. Then Monday, we'll see uh, afternoon sunshine temperatures, upper 30s for high. Same goes for Tuesday. Overnight lows next week in the middle 20s. And then as we head toward the middle part of the week turning a little bit milder and after the Sunday night Monday morning system that we have issued declared an alert for due to the potential impact for the Monday morning commute from some of that accumulating snow our next chance for some wet, maybe wintry weather won't come until Friday to Saturday of next week and shoreline highs this weekend within a couple degrees of 40. All right, Mark, thank you very much. Still ahead for you right here. Saying thank you to an Amazon driver with a tip, but it won't come out of your pocket. The new way you can make Amazon foot that bill. But first, here's what's coming up next on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert. From sun till the end of the day, more people watch Eyewitness News than any other source. This is not an accident for breaking news. News is found suspected killer now behind bars. Investigations that get results. Chief doesn't always mean better. And solutions to make ends meet. You actually waste more energy. Most watched every newscast every day thanks to you. Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Connecticut's number one local news. on select new Volvo models. Contact your Volvo retailer to learn more. Now it's official. Xfinity has the fastest internet and the fastest mobile service. That's right, Xfinity just increased internet speeds again. And Xfinity Mobile gives you can't-catch-me speeds. Plus, save hundreds on internet for your first two years when you add mobile. The fastest internet, the fastest mobile service, and major savings? Can't argue with the facts. Get internet for $30 a month for two full years when you add Xfinity Mobile. Or get $200 back when you upgrade to gig. Switch today. Extreme times call for extreme measures. Pilgrim is pushing savings to the limit during the extreme savings sale. Save 50 to 70%, plus get up to 60 months special financing with no money down. Only at Pilgrim Furniture and Mattress City. From our family to yours, happy holidays from Channel 3. This is pretty Tip your Amazon delivery driver this holiday season, and it won't cost you a penny. All you have to do is tell Alexa. As of this week, customers can tell Alexa to, quote, thank my driver, and that person, the last one at your house, will get an extra $5 from Amazon. It's part of a holiday promotion for the first 1 million thank yous, and the five drivers who get the most will actually get a $10,000 bonus each. Keep in mind, though, you have to tell Alexa, quote, thank my driver, and she will 
will take care of the rest. Holiday shopping is breaking spending records, but Gen Z appears to be more eager than other groups when it comes to hunting those deals at the mall. Shoppers born between 1997 and 2012 are leading the pack this season. Gen Z shoppers were out in force over Thanksgiving weekend. There's much more optimism in spite of the challenges on inflation and price pressures. I think people are really ready to be out there. Nearly 123 million people visited actual stores over the Black Friday and holiday weekend. That's up 17% from last year. SantaCon is coming up this weekend in New York City, so to keep things safe and moving along, Metro North won't allow booze on the trains or at any of the stations over the weekend starting Saturday at 4 a.m. The ban will continue until Sunday night at midnight. When the Yukon women won their first national championship, Carla Berube was on that team. Now she's back, 27 years later, coaching on the other sideline. We'll see what that looks like in the highlight zone. After dry and bright, uh, end of the week with highs in the 40s tomorrow. Cooler weather for Saturday and abundance of clouds. A breeze that will make it feel even chillier. Then for Sunday, increasing chances for some wet and wintry precip. Snow becoming likely uh, late afternoon through the evening hours. Also a bit breezy by the time it wraps up by the Monday morning commute. And this is preliminary in the higher elevations of northern and northwest Connecticut. We could see one to three inches of snow. sign then drive event you can make maintenance cost worries so last year hurry in during the sign then drive event and give yourself the gift of a new volkswagen i am a caregiver for heart for health care independence at home i have the desire and the passion to care for people independence at home can provide care hourly or a live-in caregiver when we have a client that has more needs Heart for Healthcare has the team and the support. Our clients don't feel alone anymore. They feel like they have someone there that they can rely on. I feel like I'm making a difference in their life. The weather outside is frightful, but the savings are so delightful at Metro Mattress. Get year-end savings on all the top brands and get 300 in gifts with purchase of Tempur-Pedic mattresses. Upgrade to an adjustable base and get 300 in gifts with purchase with luxury Chatham & Wells. Or take home a Sealy Firm or Soft Mattress, your choice, just $4.59. Shop any of our new Connecticut locations. Metro Mattress. Metro Mattress, the sleep superstore. It's time to remodel your bathroom, but you don't want the hassle. You just want it done. Rebath, from start to stunning. At the Volkswagen Sign Then Drive event, you can make maintenance cost worries so last year. Hurry in during the Sign Then Drive event and give yourself the gift of a new Volkswagen. Whether it's the new cookie butter cold brew or your go-to Dunkin' favorite, we want to see how you do holidays the Dunkin' way. Post a photo of yourself on your favorite social media with the hashtag Holidays the Dunkin' way, and you could be featured on Great Day at 9A. Dancing is everything. Soccer is the best. But her moderate to severe eczema could make it hard for her. My skin was so itchy, and my outfit was uncomfortable. Now, my skin's not as itchy. Now, we're staying ahead of her eczema. There's a power inside all of us to live our passion. And Dupixent works on the inside to help heal your skin from within. It helps block a key source of inflammation inside the body that can cause eczema. So they can have clearer skin and less itch. Serious allergic reactions can occur that can be severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems, such as eye pain or vision changes, including blurred vision, joint aches and pain, or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines without talking to your doctor. Healing from within is a wonderful thing. Ask your child's eczema specialist how Dupixin can help heal their skin from within. Now you can take on the elements with confidence because your Ford dealers have weather-ready SUVs in stock for immediate delivery. From escape with available intelligent all-wheel drive to explore with a terrain management system to Bronco Sport with goat modes. So you'll be prepared to take the season by storm. 
Now get a 2022 Explorer with 0.9% financing. Or returning less ease, drive home a four-wheel drive Explorer for just $379 a month. For the first time as a head coach, Carla Berube back in stores to see how her really good Princeton team stacks up against UConn. I'll tell you what, they stack up really good. The story of this game begins right here. Three minutes into the second half, UConn has a 13-point lead when Nika Mule gets an elbow in the face and then falling down her head into Aliyah Edwards' knee. Mule had to be helped off. She did not come back. UConn's down to just seven players. Thankfully for the Huskies, one of them was Audrey Griffin. While Princeton was closing the gap, Griffin was making just enough baskets. She scored UConn's last five of them. She had 29 points, a career high, 11 for 11 from the field, 10 rebounds. And still here we are, 30 seconds to go, and Caitlin Chen hits a two for Princeton. The lead is just two. Princeton turns it over right there. And then the freshman, Enos Betancourt, made two free throws with five seconds left. UConn holds on to win it 69-64. Post game courtesy SNY. It's just really hard right now playing the way we're playing. Playing with the lineup that we're playing. It's, you know, it's a lot to ask of, uh, of, of this team. And uh, I don't know how much longer we can sustain this. Mule told Gino after the game she feels fine. We'll see. UConn's next game Sunday at uh, 20th ranked Maryland. We're heading into the final Saturday of the high school football season, previewing all of the championship games. Tonight, we're in class double S, the game between the fifth seed, Joe Barlow, in the sixth, Valley Regional Old Lime. From the first day, I think we've always known we were a good team, um, but everyone else around us, we, uh, other teams were definitely good. But I think it was really figuring out. Um, our second game, we really, uh, really played really well against a team that we lost to a, a year ago. So I think that was kind of the turning point. I guess it's kind of the sense of family on the team. You know, we got a lot of uh, brothers on the team and great coaches, great guys. And so we've just been working really hard for this. The Class Double S Final Saturday, 5.30 at a root field at CCSU. The UConn football team is working hard the next few days trying to get the football preps for a bowl against Marshall worked out. Coach Jim Mora looking to manage the fine line between what's routine and what's special. We're treating this like we would treat the Super Bowl. So if you're a Super Bowl team and there's a two-week window between um, the game and your NFC or AFC championship game, that first week you kind of get all the logistics done. Um, you do your heavy lifting in terms of your installation and your hard practices. And then you go to the site and you just sharpen things up. UConn and Marshall in the Myrtle Beach Bowl. The team leaves next Thursday. I'll be there on Saturday to begin our bowl coverage. That's sports. Guys, you got it. All right, Joe, thank you very yep. much. Uh, all eyes on the weekend. Yeah, so uh, and more clouds than sun on Saturday. Not a big deal, but it's uh, later Sunday afternoon into Sunday night, perhaps lingering into Monday morning. We've got an alert where we could see a little wintry mix, some accumulating snow, especially across inland Connecticut. All right, Mark, thank you. And thank you very much for joining us tonight for Eyewitness News here at 11. Have a great night, everybody. Tomorrow's Friday. We'll see you then. <laughs>